unicorns and glitter and taxidermy critters are just some of the things they like. They also enjoy 80s hair bands, Grizzly Adams and John Goodman, so if you think that's weird then you can take a hike. But the things they enjoy the most are making art and cracking jokes. So without further ado, here are your hosts. You've got your two artsy gals, your two artsy gals. Here are your two artsy gals. Hey everybody, this is Katie. And this is Lonnie. And you're listening to Two Artsy Gals. Yay! Yay! Oh my gosh. It feels I like it's been a long time I know. since I've seen you. I can't wait for summer to be over. I know. We are going to get back to our regular weekly recording schedule after Labor Day weekend, guys. Like, there's going to we'll be see. this one. We won't have one for Labor Day <laughs> because I just, I got sick. And I think part of the reason I got sick this week is because I have been going nonstop all fucking summer. Mm-hmm. Also, because some asshole did not stay home with their fucking germs, and they hacked and coughed all over the goddamn Bolt bus yep. on the way home from Seattle last week. Ugh. Keep your fucking germs at home, guys. Right. Nobody else wants them. Yeah. Yuck. No. Your germs are gross. Maybe they were going home so their mom could take care of them. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. Also, the Bolt bus is pretty awesome. Is it? Like, it's economical and the seats are pretty comfortable and it's a straight shot from Seattle or from Portland to Seattle. There uh-huh. are no stops. So you just get to relax and whatever. I slept for part of the ride home, but I have to say, I think I'm going to have to reinstate my rule about not going to the bathroom and moving vehicles. Oh yeah. I don't fucking like that. I try not to do it when I'm flying. I try not to now. I, I almost, I almost fucking, Okay. I fell like I like the bathrooms in that bus are as small as like an airplane bathroom. Uh, yeah. So the bus lurched in traffic and I lunged forward. And then I thought, oh, my God, what if that fucking door popped open in my underpants and pants were around my ankles <laughs> and I fell out into the fucking aisles <laughs> all bare assed and stuff. That would be horrible. That would be horrible. It would be awful. Plus, I'm glad that didn't happen. I am too, but I had a real anxiety moment in the bathroom when it when the when the bus lurched, and I'm like, oh yeah. my god, because I was just pulling my pants up, and I was like, oh my god, it was terrible. I know. When I it, hate flushing the airplane toilets. Oh, they just freak me yeah, out. Yeah, they're a little scary, and that bus toilet smelled horrible. Oh no! Like even though it had like the blue water, I think that one of the like, I think that something was broken, so that like. <sighs> Because it wasn't sealed off even when you didn't flush it. Oh. Like, there was just a hole down in there, and it smelled really bad. Like, so anytime anyone Ew. opened the bathroom door, it was like... <laughs> oh, no. So, but it was an easier way than... It was It was better than driving to Seattle. Mm-hmm. Especially because traffic on the way home was horrible because everybody was headed to Portland to or to Oregon to yeah. hog up our fucking totality. <laughs> Fuckers. I know. I wish we would have gone. It was mellow in Staten. There wasn't yeah. like a lot of extra people. It seems like um, further south was where everybody was at. I can't think of the name of the yeah. city. Yeah, Madras. Madras. Madras is where it was at. Yeah. Did you know Kid, Wa- Kid Rock flew in to watch it and flew out? No. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to sing Kid Rock. That's funny. He just flew in on his private jet and left as soon as it was over. Wow. So... Yeah, I would do that, too, if I was... If I had the money to do that, I'd yeah. do that kind of shit all the it time. It was so amazing. It was so weird and amazing, and I don't know. It's like... It ugh. It was fucking awesome here, even though we yeah. didn't get totality. It was really weird, too. It freaked the dog and cat out. Yeah? I didn't think they would notice, but we were out on the porch, and they wanted to be out on the porch with us, but when we tried to let them out on the porch, they were like, uh-uh, I ain't going out there. <laughs> like, yeah. So they just sat and made weird noises and paced at the sliding door. Huh. Because the crows kind of all got really noisy and they went back to bed. When wow. it started getting dusky, they like flew over and settled in the trees and were doing their the talking to each other that they do at night. Uh huh. So I think that that might have been what was freaking the dog and cat. <laughs> I don't know. The cat went from window to window for a while, like weirded out. When we were walking back, we were, we uh, 
we were walking from Scott's dad's house to there's a field at the high school there. Mm-hmm. Um, but the morning doves were cooing and stuff. And I was like, oh, weird. The morning yeah. doves are like, coo, coo. I was like, how cool. Yep, they were, they were like, oh, it's time for bed. It's yeah. getting dark again. <laughs> yeah, Sorry. that was neat. It was really neat. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm trying not to cough all over everybody. And it was cool to see the kids see it. Colin brought a friend, and they were just like, what? Yeah. They were just like, wow. Yeah. I wish I would have seen the totality now, but, like, it was taking people. Did it take you guys three hours to get home, didn't it? Yeah, because we, we could have waited. Mm-hmm. We thought we were being tricky and that we were going to get out before, you know, the mass exodus from Madras or whatever. But, nope. yeah, we got. But it was a nice. We took the back road, so we went through, like, Mount Angel and these little towns. Yeah, so I actually kind of liked pretty, doing that. Yeah, it was pretty. but And we were all just, like. I think weirded out from the eclipse. So we just kind of. It was kind of a weird feeling. Like it made uh-huh. you feel like, I don't know about you, but even though it wasn't even totality, I kind of had this a weird calm. Yeah. Come over me. Like it was just this weird calm feeling. Yeah. It was, it was awesome. Yeah. And everybody cheered down mm-hmm. there when it hit totality. And when it ended, they were just like, woo. And that was cool. That's pretty amazing. I wish yeah. that we would have gone to my sister-in-law's now, but. But Kurt would not have liked that traffic. No, huh? he wouldn't have. See, I and wonder what it would have been like to wait a few hours even and then It was go. pretty bad well it, into the yeah, afternoon on the yeah. news. They were saying it was pretty... It actually got worse for a while. Yeah. And and I wasn't feeling well. So, like, that was the first day of, of my real... Like, my cold. So oh, yeah. It would have just been yucky. But it was neat to see, though. Even in mm-hmm. partial. Like, it was really fucking cool to see. Yeah. And my friend Angie came to the rescue because I waited till the last minute to get glasses because I'd seen them everywhere. And I was like, oh, I'll just get some closer. And then they were all gone all of a sudden. Yeah. And Angie's friend gave her some. And she shouted out on Facebook the other day and said, does anybody need any? And I said, we need some. And they were coming over to disc golf at the course over here. Oh, cool. So she just dropped them off for us in the morning. So So we had glasses to look. Because we were just going to have to stay inside and watch it on TV. Yeah. But it is neat to see it. Yeah. It's it so weird. I watched this one really beautiful video someone took in Mattress. And it was amazing. You could see the spots on the sun. Yeah, the, the flares moon. coming out around. Yeah. And, and like and... the black little spots. Mm-hmm. It was so odd. Or I was like, I wonder if that's stuff between us and the sun or if that's spots on the sun or like. That There's was a probably cool video. the spots on the sun. That's pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah, it was weird. It's like Whoa. I know my friend um, Sharon's husband Danny got some really cool pictures with their with his big fancy camera, but and someone took a picture of a time lapse. I don't know if oh, you've seen it yet. I have you? That. It's like across it shows the, the whole series of it across the sky, and it was just fucking amazing. Yeah, like, so beautiful. Yeah, it was really cool. I love all the pictures I'm seeing. I'm like, wow. Yeah, that's cool. Too. That was good shit. It's so weird that, like, I mean, the rest of the country, unless you were in the path of totality, you didn't get to see. Yeah. I mean, it's so strange. But it seems like think. a lot of people traveled to see Oh, my it. God, a lot of people traveled. But Oregon mm-hmm. handled it well. I feel yeah. bad for the people at the coast, though, because... Yeah, they lost a lot of business. They they were gearing up for they a big They geared crowds. up for great big crowds, and most people went to Madras and stuff. But it was silly to me that so many people were planning on i mean yes it hit lincoln city first but i grew up on the coast i know what happens in august on the coast it's rarely clear in the morning yeah like it's always fogged in socked in and it doesn't clear until around noon because when it's hot in the valley they get fog and stuff so not as many people came as they thought were going to and i guess they like the one guy on the news said you could have thrown a bowling ball down or a water launched a watermelon down highway 101 and not hit a single car that is so weird yeah my friends went down there and they said it was foggy on the beach but they went up on a hill and were Mm -hmm. able to totally watch it so people would have been able to see it there it's like oh Mm -hmm. that would have been cool but but then that enabled people to go and like yeah. Be like, hey, I think we made it here and it's a not A little crowded. bit funny that, or ironic. I, I am enjoying the fact that 
Remember at the beginning of summer, as soon as all the motels down there realized why people were booking that weekend, Mm -hmm. and they started canceling reservations with no notice and changing the prices, and they had so many people cancel because they changed their mind about where they were going because of the weather. (laughs) Yeah. So that's what they get for being greedy. Yeah. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. Uh Mm-hmm. I like Katie has plaid fingernails right now, and they're very cute. Oh, I do. They're those... They're the Sally Hansen stick on. I like them thingies. I love these. They yeah. make. I, I did them for Rancid. Yeah, that's perfect. I had some cool nails for the concert. Yeah, it was so fucking awesome. Yay! Like, and I didn't. I never got to see Rancid in the nineties. Like I had a baby at home, and my ex went out to music, and I stayed home. Like I didn't. I just didn't get to do it. So. You know, and then I was a single mom and I couldn't afford that shit. So right. it was fucking awesome to be able to see yes. them. And they did such a good show. Yay. It was so much fun. It That's, was great. Yeah. And I do recommend taking the Bolt bus to Seattle from Portland. Yeah, if you I have wanted the to try it. So, yeah. It's affordable. I mean, the train's nice. We take the train up sometimes, but the trains are really fucking expensive. Really now. expensive. I know. I've I've every once in a while have this thing where I'm like, I want to take the train to Seattle, and then I look it up and I'm like, Never mind. Never mind. It's too expensive. <laughs> yeah. Because I think that'd be fun for my kid. It would be. Yeah. It's fun just to go up there for the day too. Seattle's yeah. pretty. I forget how different Seattle is from Portland. Yeah, it is like, different. I think there are much more uh, ethnically diversity than Portland is. Yeah. For sure. And their Chinatown is a way fucking better than our Chinatown. Yeah. Like, they actually have businesses and, like, our Chinatown sucks. Yeah. You don't go into our Chinatown after dark. Yeah. Because it's scary down there. Yep. It's bad. Yeah. But they have their, like, the big Ouija Maya complex, which I didn't know that they have one also because we have the one in Beaverton that's, like, the big um, Asian shopping center. Theirs is way bigger. It's huge. Ooh. I went in and bought some cool stuff. Yeah, I love I that kind there. of place. I bought some little cool chopstick holders that I'm going to use for paintbrush holders, like to rest your paintbrushes yeah. on when they're all loaded with paint and you need to set them down. That is a good idea. Right. They were cool. Smart. I also bought some teeny tiny rubber animals, just because rubber Aww. animals, <laughs> tiny stuff. Rubber animals. But I, I've been spinning out trying to figure out how we're going to transition into our topic I know. today. And I just don't think that there's... I don't think there's a way. So no. I'm just going to say, we're talking about poor, poor painting. Yeah. P-O-U-R, not P-O-O-R. <laughs> uh, some sites call it liquid painting, but I think that that sounds dumb <laughs> because it's paint. I don't know. But we were going paint to record liquid. about it last time we recorded. And when I was researching, I thought, well, this isn't something that I can just skim over. It's a little bit more involved than I thought it was. Yeah. And I wanted to know about it because... The reason we're doing this is people in our group, the two artsy gals making cool shit you yo group on Facebook have been posting a lot of videos uh-huh. of poor painting, and I it's mesmerizing. Yeah. I can watch it all fucking day. Yeah, it is mesmerizing. I could just stare at it. So basically, um, pouring. Now I t- I actually took a lot of research from an article by Courtney Jordan on the. Um, artisan network website nice so her article called finish your first perfect painting uh was what i referenced most because she just had some really good a nicely laid out and explained a lot of things so i don't normally go off of just one source i kind of skim shit and piece it together Uh but this was such a good article that i just i'm gonna use it so so um Poor, poor painting is a great way, as I'm quoting her directly, to smooth out unwanted texture. Pouring is a great way to smooth out unwanted texture, get marvelized effects and rich color glazes. And um, Jackson Pollock did a lot of poor painting. Ah. You think of his work. Um, so there are two categories for poor painting. Um, coated pours and wash pours and each requires a different procedure um so the coated pouring it resembles oil paint and it has intensely glossy bright colors okay so and that's 
that's what we're going to talk about the most because mm-hmm. that's what that's what the videos that's are, what right? the videos that's what everybody's seen. Okay. Uh, quickly, you can do a wash painting, and a wash painting is meant to look more like watercolor. It's you would dilute. Oh. You would dilute oh, the paints yeah. with water okay. rather than the additives that we're going to talk about for poor painting, like for the um, coated painting. But you would get that marbleized Yeah, effect. but it would happen more. And you would probably do it more on like more porous surfaces. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but that's not what, that's not what everybody's going crazy about in the internet art world right okay. now. Okay. It's the coated pores. And... Um, they're pretty fucking awesome. So you're you're basically just using acrylic paint and different mediums, um, with little to no water. Okay. So because you want the bright, saturated colors. So for the best results, you're going to use um. So you're going to use pouring medium, which I had never heard of before all these yeah. things started coming up. And before I started researching it, I had never heard of it. I was like, what the fuck is that? Because there are so, when you go into the art store, there are so many fucking mediums mm-hmm. to mix your acrylic paints with, which is awesome. But I tend to stick towards the ones that I use regularly mm-hmm. and the ones that I know because I go in with a budget. Yeah. And once you start dilly dallying and looking at other stuff, that's how you get to the register and go, oh, fuck. Yeah. I don't mean to spend this Wait, much. I gotta put, put some of this back. back. Yeah. yeah I so know. I I tend to make myself put blinders on when I go yeah, into the like art supply store. Like you're looking for the thing that you need. I have a list. I go yeah. in with what I need and very rarely do I just because if, if I got into all the fucking mediums in the like golden paint section. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. I would be there for I look days. at them sometimes and I just wonder what do these do? Like, yeah. So I don't I don't let myself do that because then you start reading them and you're like oh Oh, I, I can that. do that. I can do that. Yeah. 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 And the print is very small. On oh, the yes. Of I know. That's actually, I don't, <laughs> I don't bring my glasses <laughs> to the art supply store with me. So then I can't yeah. read what they do. Mm-hmm. And there's no point because I have noticed in the last year or so. As a matter of fact, I should put my fucking glasses on uh, Speaking now so of I glasses. Read my notes. <laughs> I've noticed in the last year or so. What is my hair doing right now? It's cute. It's okay. Curly. I feel like it's like doing a, it's. I feel like a little pigeon, like I have this, or a quail, I have this little thing. Nothing sticking <laughs> out. Okay, yeah, good. no. I can I just, see why it feels that way, because it's... Do I have, like, my cowlix out of control right now? It's just now, going it? over, okay. but yeah, it's okay. not sticking out or anything. I just felt like I needed to slap my head around for a second. It was annoying me. <laughs> but, ow, did you see that? <laughs> you poked <laughs> the end of your nose. I poked the end <laughs> of my nose. Okay, so I'm going to talk for just a second about pouring medium, because that is what we need so pouring medium creates even puddles poured sheets wow. um, and, and flowing applications of color without cracking oh yes it doesn't yellow yeah. it's self-leveling See, that yeah so it almost if you just did it like, without it it would yeah because acrylic look terrible. paint would crack yeah and it, it's self-leveling and it's super high gloss so when you're pouring this stuff sounds so fun it spreads out and levels all by itself so it oh. adds some it and it thins without diluting the color of the paint wow oh, that sounds so fun so, oh you know we're gonna have to get some i know to try yeah it, for real yeah like i'm gonna have to do that um so i just and, it, and you can buy liquitex makes a pouring medium oh um, okay uh, so golden wonder, makes a pouring medium they all make pouring mediums i'm is sure it like that, a like, latex well, no. No, I it's mean, an acrylic. Acrylic. Okay. Um, it probably a lot of it has silicone in it. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, silicone. And so there smooth. are there are other things that you can use for pouring mediums. So you can use like PVA glue is sometimes used. Um, oh yeah, I can see how that would have that same. Yeah. Similar. Some people mix PVA glue and like a silicone mm-hmm. additive and stuff, but. Um, and there are a million videos on how to do this and how to do the different mixtures. I, for simpl- simplifying it, and because I'm not an expert on it, I'm going to just stick with talking about how doing it with the pouring the medium. The pouring medium. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you can feel free to research it 
on your own. Um, you the artist waste, network, waste your own paint. Yeah, <laughs> that is the <laughs> biggest good. thing to me. It makes me so anxious watching yeah. people waste all this paint. Like, yeah, and then you don't know if you don't use a pouring medium. You know, mm -hmm. if you use something else, it's not guaranteed that. But so I looked at I looked up the supplies and I was reading about it and there are so you high flow, um, acrylic paints which. I thought tended to be way more expensive because like the golden ones that I like are really expensive, mm -hmm. but they do. I looked, they have cheaper brands, um, n less expensive brands. Uh, so it's worth looking into. It's yeah. It's worth. And, and I'm going to post again. I did a search on the Blake website and all the things that pouring medium came up, but also paints that you use for it. So I will post that on the website also. I'm sorry. One second. Have you ever had a bra that comes unhooked by itself? Like Wait, just what? wearing it and then it just comes unhooked by itself? I had a front latch bra that did that in high school. It was awful. This is a back hook. Your bra is too, you need a smaller it's bra. It's too big, yeah. That's what it is. Um, <laughs> anyway, sorry. It's like, oh, this feels yeah. weird. Now I totally forgot where I was. <laughs> um, so they do, some people do use like the cheaper, uh, art acrylics like the ones like the ones that are like a dollar or two the ones with the apple i can't remember the brand um so it would just depend on your what budget, about the I cheap think. acrylics the ones that are called cheap the have you seen those? Called cheap no oh i thought you had those one i had one do i i don't know i just buy shit i don't know what the fuck <laughs> i have um any lately i use liquitex base like liquitex basics but those are a thicker so you would want a one that a high flow like one that you could pour more um and you're mixing it with the pouring medium um i think that it depends on your budget and your desired outcome you could mm -hmm. probably i would experiment with less expensive ones at first just to kind of get your technique down and then maybe step into like the more expensive because the more expensive ones are highly more highly pigmented so you're going to get the brighter colors the more saturated crazy colors yeah so um dumb question how do you know it's high flow does it say it says high flow right on the thing sweet okay so um let me see i'm gonna go through here and um so like the dilutions are those high flow yeah but i they are but they're a different kind of paint and i wouldn't use oh, those for yeah. that because okay. i've also had some trouble with dilutions lately when i am so they're different because they're a distress paint. Oh, they're specifically okay. made by Ranger. They're a Tim Holtz, I think, and they're to do a specific thing. And I have noticed, especially when layering colors, which is what you would be doing yeah. in these pores, um, I've had trouble painting white over the top of colors. It comes through and makes everything look pink, no matter what oh, color you pour it over. Okay, yeah. So, so they would just. I don't think that those together would, in like yeah. A brown. I don't think that that would be. I think that you want specific acrylic paints yeah. and not like a dis distress paint. Because yeah. I don't know if you've noticed when you use the distress paints, they they have a little different texture to oh, them. Okay, yeah. Um, I think they're made to coat nicely in thin layers. Yeah. Um, but they have a little more tooth to them and they're not as glossy. So I don't think that they would work. And yeah. again, they're a little bit expensive for yeah, them. Like yeah. I wouldn't want to. No. Yeah. Like honestly watching that makes my pocketbook cry. Yeah. But I think that people, like you can buy the big jugs of fucking cheaper paints. So well, what about, yeah, like the paint from the paint store, like paint sample can size? Um, well, it would be if you could get just straight acrylic paint. But the problem with paint oh, store paint, like, yeah. like house paint and stuff is that you're going to have a lot more chemicals in it yeah and i wouldn't want to use that i yeah. think that that would be um because you can use your regular acrylic paints without ventilation in your yeah. studio yeah. like those are ma meant to withstand weather or withstand you know rubbing on the wall or cleaning yeah or wiping. that's not the same thing okay thanks. although it would be cheaper but yeah thanks for my answering my silly questions they're not silly questions <laughs> I don't know any, I didn't know anything about this yeah. before I started reading about it. And then, like I said, last time when we were going to talk about it, I was like, oh, well, <laughs> I can't a lot to just, this. there's a lot to this. I can't just read this. <laughs> so yeah, we did our markers one. And then, cause of course I always wait till the last minute to do my research, like an a-hole. So then the night before I'm like, oh my God, 
And I don't but now know. Now it's fresh. It's fresh. It is. And I can... haven't added you to the Pinterest board for this yet because ah. I did it. I did it a weird way this time. But I'll add you as soon as we're done, so you can see all the shit on the Pinterest yeah. board for this one because it's there's cool. a ton of crap. And I am a little bit obsessed with this now. Ooh, see, that's so fun. We discover. These well, there's some specific stuff that I want to try, but um. So here are some tips that they that this uh, Courtney Jordan article gives us to for doing coated pours. So a combination of acrylic paint and medium with little to no water added, which I already said, I think um, for best results, use pouring medium and keep water additions to less than 40 percent. Now, in the, everything else that I've read, no one has added water yeah, at all for the color. Yeah, it doesn't look pouring. like it. I don't think that you need water. Some people, there are thicker pouring mediums, like there are self-leveling gels that they've added water to to thin down and use those instead of the regular liquid pouring medium. But I think that for a be- beginner, you don't want to fuck with that. Mm-hmm. Like you want to just stick with the easiest and most direct way possible and then maybe experiment with other things later once you get the hang of it yeah so just because you don't want to waste a lot of money on supplies and and i don't know about you but when something doesn't work and i have wasted money then on oh yeah the the supplies for it it really fucking pisses me off and then it makes me kind of like you know when you put your art projects in the corner for a while because you're mad at them? That's what I do. I just had that with some sewing yesterday. I, that material I wanted to, I was going to make my kind burrito pants, and I was all excited. Oh, yeah? It just fucking shreds, like, at the seam. It doesn't, oh, it's no. a very loose weave, and it just... It just comes apart? It's not made for making pants. Oh, that's but I a tried. bummer, though. <laughs> and it was one of those where it's in the corner. And did it's they say wadded kind up. veggie burritos, or did, were they just burritos? I don't know. You said, because you were teasing me about that fabric I bought, and you were like, you could wear those to sell your kind burritos at the, oh, yeah. at the dead show. And so I was going to make my kind burrito pants. But... That's funny. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I know what fabric yeah, you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, it's like a Guatemalan kind of looking fabric. But it but... was not. Mm-hmm. That was the stuff we got from the bins, right? Yeah. We I are going to eventually do our bins reveal show but look it's been too fucking hot to sell this summer and so yeah it should have been kept as a tablecloth because it was really pretty and now i've ruined it eh, anyway well you experiment though i did and, and they would have been really cute take pictures of your mistakes okay so that we can post them because they would have been really cute because i think it's important for people to see our mistakes too yeah because you know i tend to only show the stuff that i do awesome at on uh-huh. my web or on my facebook page and stuff or yeah know. it's a funny sensation when you pull some pants on and all the seams just start falling apart. <laughs> yeah. like, i had that happen kirk got oh, me a no. pair of uh, kirk got me a onesie for christmas a few years ago uh-huh. and it's that impossibly fucking soft like it feels like somebody did a magic spell Oh, yes. To make something that soft. Mm-hmm. But that is not very sturdy. And I wore them like three times. And then my chub rub on the insides of my legs completely, like the the seams oh. on the inner legs disintegrated. Like they, Yeah. Because it just I isn't some... strong enough to yep. withstand that kind of stuff. So, <laughs> to the was, power of these thighs. To, 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 Bam. Yeah. My thunder thighs. They thunder and lightning here. They They're hard on They can't contain that magic. <laughs> they just can't. I saw somebody post this thing about being afraid they were going to drop their phone in the toilet, but thunder and lightning saved the day. Because <laughs> your yes. are big enough to catch your... <laughs> man, I've dropped some phones. In the toilet, but, um, Sorry, is that the sidebar? <clears throat> so... Yeah, I'm going to get to that in a minute. Um, you're going to want to make sure that your shit's level. Yeah. Like, you need a level, and I'll get more into the supplies, but you're going to need a level... To make sure that your panel or whatever your substrate you're pouring on is completely level because you and don't want it to get thicker on one side than yeah. the other and you want it to spread evenly. So that's really important. And you need a substrate that's strong enough to withstand pouring of layers of paint. So I see a lot of artists use birch panels. Okay, I was going to say wood. Yeah, kind. or plywood. I don't know that plywood, be, like you could probably That's pretty heavy. It. Yeah. Yeah. But um, you can use canvases, but you will want to, when you're setting it out, you're going to want um, 
to, oh, yeah, to, to put wood the... blocks underneath it to support the midsection of the canvas mm -hmm. so that it's completely level. Uh, but you're not going to be able to use like paper and stuff like that because it's going to buckle. Oh, those canvas boards would canvas maybe boards work? would be very good. Yes. Okay. Fun. Um, and before applying your, your paint and stuff, you're going to want to do a thin sealer and then prime it with gesso so that it sticks, sticks and it doesn't seep down into any porous surface. Yeah. Okay. So, and different surfaces are going to give you a different, uh, a different look. Mm -hmm. So just imagine like the texture of like a birch panel is really smooth wood. Whereas a canvas has a little tooth to it and it's mm -hmm. textured and it's going to pour at a slower rate because there's more friction on canvas than there is on smooth wood. So consider all of that when you're considering what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you don't, um, I wouldn't recommend things like cardboard either, just because I think that that would absorb way too much. Yeah. And I think yeah. it would be a little flimsy depending on the kind of cardboard do people ever do pour painting over like seems like maybe they do over the bottom of a pot like a like a plant pot i've seen that too yes and so that might but you'd have to yeah i don't know yeah and and, and i pouring think over things the instead more of a flat you surface? experiment with it yes and i've seen um, some people did like fiberboard. They sealed it really well, and they they made these crazy cool like coffee tables out of them that looked like marble. Oh yeah. So, but wow, yeah. Pretty. So I'm gonna get into. Let me see where I'm at in my notes. Um, we talked about the pouring medium. Okay, so this is the wash, and I decided I'm not gonna talk too much about the wash because. Again, maybe I'll just go, you would, uh, so if you're going to do a wash, the ones that you, that, that are more dil diluted and look like, uh, watercolors, you're going to not use any mediums for the best results. And they suggest, this article, article suggests, uh, diluting the paint with water on a one to one ratio. So that's like oh. half and half. So, um, and, and you would do. Would you dilute the individual colors first before you yes. put them together? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. So you can also, for the washes, you can also substitute acrylic inks or high flow acrylics um, and airbrush colors oh, to do yeah. that. And I think the acrylic inks would probably give you, and the alcohol inks would give you like a brighter Ooh, yeah. color. I whereas, can see doing that on paper. Yeah, whereas watering down the colors... Um, one thing that they say on these ones, because they're so watered down, um, is to avoid handling it until it's dry. Whereas with the, um, the other acrylic pores, you can kind of move it around a little bit and make sure that the, the sides are covered evenly mm -hmm. and stuff. So, but here's the shit you're going to need. Yeah. To do this. What do I Let's need? Let's talk about this. You're going to need your acrylic paints obviously mm -hmm. and your pouring medium but beyond that they suggest you can get squeeze bottles to put your paints in now it depends on what technique you're using we're yeah. going to talk about different techniques so they use little plastic cups to mm -hmm. mix their paints in or containers or some artists use squeeze bottles to squirt the paint on the canvas i think it depends on if you want to do a specific pattern in the pouring, I think you're going to have more control with a squeeze bottle mm -hmm. than just kind of leaving it up to the art gods to decide your fate with pouring. Well, the ones I saw, they like they hold the cup up. That's called a dirty pour. Okay. And we're going to get into that too. That was so cool. So you can have a big cup, little cups. Um, you're going to want palette knives um, because sometimes they're using palette knives to smooth and to kind of encourage it to kind of go along the side and cover a little bit. But they were manipulating with the metal palette knives. I seem to work better. Um, there is a method that I'm going to talk about in a minute where people are, are you're going to want a big flat plastic, um, uh, what is it called? Thing you spread spackle with. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Spackle knife? No. I don't, you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Why can't I fucking think of a name of it? Spreader. I don't know what they call oh, that. Anyway, um, a level. It's like a spatula. Kind yeah. Of. <laughs> you need a level. Popsicle sticks, depending on the, for some of these methods, um, a microbutane torch. 
can also be used. Um, like the thing you do dabs with? Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, that. I use mine for art purposes, but oh, you can't okay. do dabs with them. Um, you can get them at kitchen supply places, too. Like oh, chefs yeah, use them to the do brulee. like the creme brulee yeah, and stuff like that. Okay. Um, so you're going to want a tarp like a or a piece of plastic to put down because this is yeah, messy shit. It's really like, messy. It's super yeah. messy. Something that you don't want. Um, if you don't like your hands dirty, gloves mm-hmm. are a thing. I kind of tend to not give a fuck if my hands are dirty. I can't do art with gloves on. Yeah, it just weirds me out. Yeah. It feels too weird. I mean, there are some shit that I wear gloves for because I don't want to, you know, don't want to burn your skin off. Or... Yeah. <laughs> um. So I'm gonna skip that because I don't know what that's for. So you're gonna want your cradle board or whatever, like you know, like the the your substrate, your your birch panel, your whatever you're doing it on, um, acrylic paints, glow, golden fluid ap- acrylics, or liquitex text soft bodies um, are recommended for that you're going to do the pouring medium um, and a tub to put beneath to collect all the paint so it doesn't just fucking pour everywhere yeah because this shit is messy yeah. like sincerely if i were going to do this and i think i will wait until my garage is cleaned out so i have a place to do it in the garage yeah i was i keep envisioning doing it in the garage because i yeah. can't envision doing it here at my yeah. i have carpet in my studio mm-hmm. which is not ideal and if i owned this house i would rip the carpet out and put linoleum down but i don't own it so i have to leave the ugly ass blue carpet in the room mm-hmm. so um I'm going to talk about some techniques and shit that we've seen in the videos. So the one that you mentioned where you see people putting, they put a whole bunch of different colors in a cup and then they kind of set the cup on top of the panel, set the panel on top of the cup and then Mm -hmm. they flip it over and they get it all level and then they pick the cup up and it just, and it just goes bloop and pours out and it's so cool. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to do. It's so neat to watch. Um, that is called a dirty pour, which just means that you're, you have more than one color in the cup. Okay. And it's just, you just kind of let it flow out and cover where it wants to. And it kind of breaks up into what they, what, what people that do this call cells where you can see like the little, it just depends. I'm sorry. See, I was wondering if they had to add an additive to get that cell it's the pouring effect. Medium. Okay. And I also think that sometimes, I think you can experiment with other additives because I think that sometimes they're adding a little bit of silicone mm, to okay. it. Um, but again, I, I would that. stick with this method, like the, yeah. the basic, just to get try the hang it. of it, yeah. and then experiment with it more. Because then you might see where you could, yeah, switch things up a little bit. Yeah. So that's the dirty pour. And that is pretty straightforward. Now you're going to set your, you're going to want, like I said, a completely level place to set that on. A lot of people I see, they use like a big jelly roll pan, like the cookie sheets with the lip. Oh yeah. Yeah. A big old one of those is what they're using to collect the paint in. And a lot of times they're setting their canvas or their panels on. They have like a, a cooling rack for baking inside of that pan and then they have something set up on top of that to lift the canvas up yeah. off of it and then it's dripping down so however you, you i mean i would watch some videos and see how people set up to do it mm-hmm. but you're definitely you're going to need something to catch that and you're going to want something to hold your work up out of the the paint that is yeah and i think the cooling rack is like an extra step between like if your canvas accidentally falls it's not going to fall into the paint that's collecting below, it's going to fall on the rack. Yeah. So once that pour is done, like once it's all coated the way you want it, you don't touch that shit for like at least 24 hours. Yeah. It's going to take a long time to dry. It takes a long time to dry. It does. Yeah. They say at least 24 hours. And I think it'd probably take a little bit longer to cure. Yeah. I would just fucking. I would leave it on for a few days. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. I would walk away. Yeah. Because. I would look at it, though. Yeah. I would keep walking back and looking at it. Acrylic paint (laughs) dries really quickly, but when you're putting an additive, the pouring medium. Yeah, and the pouring medium probably makes it dry more slowly. Yes. So that it can pour, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah, I would would just leave that alone. Yeah. So, then you just have the regular pouring. Like, you also see people have different colors set up separately. Okay. And you're just kind of pouring them around. 
um, the canvas. That seems fun too. However you want them. Um, this is real Jackson Pollocky. Yeah. Um, you pour them on there, and then I see people tipping the canvases, and this is when they're using the palette knife to maybe manipulate where they want it, uh, yeah. or the squirt bottle to do a more defined pattern, and then allowing it to drip around and make sure that the sides are covered, um, and and to encourage those cells that we want that yeah. look so freaking cool that's where the butane torch is coming in you're uh, like heating it heating the paint i almost think it makes the paint boil a little bit yeah. and so then it brings out those colors yeah so and they do they do that with the dirty pores too or is it just... yes you can do that with the dirty pores also wow wow so and, and uh, I would almost try one without doing that first yeah. or do smaller ones to experiment, like set yeah, up a row of smaller ones. It would ones be easier to just do. Just to kind of learn your technique. Mm -hmm. Just have them all out at once and do a bunch of tiny ones to kind of figure out uh, how how you, how, what, what's comfortable for you and your process yeah. and learning a new thing. So I'm kind of excited about yeah, this. Because here it's... is the one that... I am all about. It's oh. called swiping. Swipe or no swiping? Swiping. And actually, I'm going to pull up a picture of this for you, Lonnie, on the computer just because I am. It makes the fucking coolest looking shit. Like, nice. I'm not even kidding you. So, in. Hold on, because I'm turned away from the microphone. I'm just going to turn really quick. I will cut this part out. <laughs> Ugh. Come on, Pinterest. Oh, my God. we Our Pinterest is so huge now that, like, it takes for fucking ever to scroll through <laughs> and for shit to load. And my internet's been really slow for the last couple of days. Okay, you're going to just be, here comes the board. <laughs> you're going to be like, what? So, let me find this. Ooh, they're so pretty. They are so beautiful. And there are just so many different, I mean. I like the round one. That was cool. I, that is really cool. Where's the swiping one? It's the one I'm specific. Okay. That oh. is created by swiping. So I'm going to put the tutorial for swiping on the website since I'm specifically talking about yeah. it. Yeah. I'll find a good video for each method and put them on there. But there's also an excellent website. It's called acrylicpouring.com. Okay. They have, all, they have a blog. They have all kinds of tutorial videos. They have... Uh, a shopping page where you can get all the products that you specifically want. They're a little bit more expensive than getting them other places. So I might yeah. take notes and then look at other places, but the swiping method is where you get some really cool cells. And I watched this lady do yeah. it by video. So what happens is they're using popsicle sticks instead of pouring. Okay. And they're smearing these mixed colors on the canvas kind of, in a pattern, but random, the bright, pretty colors. And then I, my favorite is there. So they're swiping black over the top of it. So this is a palette knife when they or not the palette knife, the, the putty knife, the big oh, fat yeah. wide putty knife. They're doing a heavy pour of black paint across the top when, after they've layered all these other colors on, and then they're, scraping or swiping the black over the top of all the colors. And then the other ones bubble up And underneath. then the other ones bubble up underneath. Oh. And then they kind of hit it with a little bit of heat here and there to kind of make more come up where they want more to come up. But it is, wow. it's gorgeous. It's really pretty. It's gorgeous. I want to do one. I want one on my walls. It's, it's very it's psychedelic. Very, like, yeah. It is. It's almost a little ethereal like, yeah. or spacey. It's That's amazing. Beautiful. Yeah. I, and then they, and then this artist went in and like added some dots of like metallics and added some, you know, to mm -hmm. kind of enhance it where she wanted to. And she yeah. filled the little black in in spots, but it's the swiping is where it's at for me. Okay. I've got to fucking try that shit. Yeah. For real. So. What is that round one? Uh, oh, so they're doing a spiral pour. Oh. So what they're doing is, this is another cool thing. They have old turntables oh. that don't work to play anymore. Or I would imagine like if you have a spinning wheel mm -hmm. or even a lazy Susan, if you got it yeah. going and then they're pouring the paint on okay. a piece of round, like a, a round substrate. And then it is making this cool And then up a little thing. bit. 
think it was next to the swiping one, that round one. Yeah, they're just they they just did a pour over a round piece, which wow. looks really fucking cool. It's really pretty. These are so delicious too. Like, I kind of want to lick them. Yeah, a little bit because they yeah. have that weird shiny quality that makes me want to lick things. Yeah. It's so a- you're not usually a fan of gloss, but in this case, in this case, yeah. I fucking love it. Okay. Like because it's meant to be glossy yes. and shiny. Like it kind of yeah, gives it. I don't like, like doing like painting with glossy, but yeah, this is. Yeah, it's it's fucking amazing. Yeah. Ooh, they're all so pretty. So it seems like no matter what, it's going to freaking turn out cool. Yeah, and I even think in this case your mistakes could be awesome. Yeah, like, it looks you're like just it. kind of fucking around. And I also saw, I'm going to look Ooh, for... Ooh, that one looks like water. Yeah, it does. That's really pretty. Um, There are so many. It's like I actually thought about doing this topic at the beginning of the summer, and there wasn't a lot of information available and it seems like over the summer this has fucking blown up yeah and now there are there's tutorials all over the place like it's pretty wild yeah like it, it's everywhere now so i think that now is the time mm-hmm. if you're going to learn how to do this so i'm going to put up a bunch of tutorials on the blog post for cool. each method i'm talking about there is also one where people where they were making a sheet like, so I can't remember where I saw it, but they were, they did a pour with this pouring medium, but then they used it so they could, they separated it from the substrate. Like they used, they poured it on plastic or something. So then it was just like this big sheet that they could then put on something else. Oh my god! It was really yes. fucking cool. Like it was so cool. So I'm going to try to find that oh also, god, that yeah, tutorial. Like some kind of no stick. Yes. So you're going to want to go to twoartsygals.com wow. for this so that you can see all the tutorials that we're going to put up for this shit. Because you could, you could make like a phone case with it yes, or something. Yes, that's what they, anything or like, like that. A, wow. And they, I've noticed, a speaking of phone cases, or something. Yeah, I kind of want to do um, an episode about this kind of stuff because I saw the other day they make clear laptop cases, or I mean, not laptop phone cases that you can put your own art stuff in oh cool and there was a really neat method of most of these things i think when kids are like it's teenagers doing tutorials of shit and i'm like that is dumb that's just dumb that is a wasteful that's not the kids are dumb but i just think there's better ways you could do it you're being i don't want to fucking risk fucking up my phone like that kind of stuff yeah but this was really fucking cool like nice. it was neat. So I want to do one of those maybe in the fall, maybe for back to school. Yeah. We'll decorate our phones and stuff. <laughs> but so I think that's it in a nutshell. Do you have anything that you want to ask about it? Any, anything else? Did I miss something? I don't think so. So what are, do, do you have a specific favorite video that you've watched that like. It was just a pouring video that was, go- it was a dirty pour. That yeah. Was going around, but I just thought wow that looks really fucking messy but really it does look messy it looks <laughs> cool. wasteful but it also looks really cool and it, it yeah it can produce some really i like the, the fact that it levels and it's glossy yes that is a game changer because i was thinking that they were just showing us the wet painting no it dries and i was glossy. like oh i see yeah it looks like that now but it's gonna be a cracked piece of shit later nope. but now it's like that's, oh wait that's no. what the okay pouring medium does uh, that really does dry that glossy it Holy dries shit. probably a little less glossy than like oh than when it's wet but it does dry glossy and i think what you about also adding seal glitter it. like would you just sprinkle it over the top I don't when know. you're done pouring. I think that you can, I'll look for glitter pours. I want glitter pours. I do too because you know. <laughs> how, well, I was thinking about even adding metallic. Or like, like if you could do a, a clear acrylic liquid and oh. then just add glitters to those. In the pouring. That would be cool. I don't know. See, experiment, experiment. We have ins- Or this, just mix glitter right into the pouring yeah. medium. I this don't is know. really inspired Lonnie. I love glitter. I think the I super want fine glitter. glitters like the, the mica. Glitters yeah. and and the super fine ones that would just mix in with the paint. Well, that's why I think like the um, the golden interference colors they're really fucking expensive. But if you yeah. could find something like that to mix in, I don't ever paint with those straight. I'd mix them with my other acrylic paints. Anyway, what were we saying? Oh, so I'm imagining like painting 
my surface, whatever color or different colors or whatever, and then do just mixing some glitters into pouring medium and just pouring it. So it'd be I like think that a, would be really cool. But if they were the really fine, super fine glitters, yeah. I think that would work well. Yeah. I think it would mix well. I just want a shiny sparkly thing. I do too. <laughs> I want all the shiny sparkly things. Yeah. I love that you love sparkles. <laughs> I love sparkles. Because, man, I got some artist friends that are not into I know, sparkles like I am. Really I really hate glitter. Really and hate I glitter. know. I, I fucking love it. I get it. you. I don't but care. You can send me glitter. If you want to make me super happy. Eyes, it w- it's what it does. It, it does makes something. my heart happy. Yeah. It's a direct line from my astonished and super excited eyeballs <laughs> to my heart. And it fills it with love. Yes. That's what happens. Glitter equals love to me. Yeah. If you glitter bombed me. It would be the most awesome day in my life. Ooh, oh my gosh, my brain's going now. Lonnie's gonna think of some shit to do. <sighs> Lonnie, you know what I need some have? pouring like, medium. For, I do. I need like a I gallon need of that shit. Medium too. I need like five gallons. It comes in shit. big gallon jugs. Okay, good, because I'm gonna need that. <laughs> we should do it. Like we should. I wish that the buses went to Vancouver. Vancouver and it's Portland that, need know. to figure some shit out. I know, we really do. Because Vancouver always tries to be all like, meh, we're not part of Portland. Bleh, bleh. We don't want your flim flammery over here on yeah. our side of the river, even though but we then are. then the... it like makes transportation really, I really know. hard. There's a Raz, there used to be a Raz bus that was a direct line but from But it's really expensive Portland. too. Is it? Okay. Yeah, and yeah. it doesn't do it anymore. Oh yeah, that Come was on. a long time Try ago. It, and I don't know what <laughs> like your twenty years ago what your public transportation is in Vancouver. C Tram. So can TriMet and we C-Tran have these fancy, make fancy friends? big buses that I see that are like mostly empty. I'm like, what is going on here? It's ridiculous. It's weird. You know they're gonna eventually get light rail to Vancouver. I like, hope so. It God. needs to happen. Yeah, it really needs to happen. I think especially now because young professionals who work in Portland can't fucking afford houses in Portland right. anymore. Right, so yeah. All the way to Vancouver. The demand is the people are going to push for it. So the whole point is, I wish that I could ride public transportation I know. to your house. <laughs> I know. And then we could do stuff like this in your garage. I know. But that would be so cool. Um, we got in a listener email, Lonnie. What? I love getting them. It's from Caitlin Broom. Hi, and Caitlin. She says, "Hi, I'm listening to this episode now. Listening." to this episode now and i would like to share this fact it was the marker episode markers last week. yay you can remove permanent marker from a dry erase board by using a dry erase marker huh. and i think i have i I'm think gonna... that i kind of knew that yeah. you draw over it with a dry erase marker and it takes it right off holy crap yeah um and she understands loving copic markers she likes them but she doesn't buy them she loves prismacolor though and she usually buys from Jerry's Artorama or Cheap Joe's Art Stuff, both of which are an hour away from her. Nice. And she got a pack of 24 with six bonus colors for $80, which came from Blake. That is a good deal. Whoa. Yeah, that's yeah, an awesome deal. And that is. And also, I asked her. Of the, um, which one? The 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 uh, Prismacolor? Prismacolors. Okay. Which are the ones that I have, but I have the smaller set. Okay. So, um, she said or I asked her because I liked the sound of Cheap Joe's art stuff. Yeah. But it is does not have a website no. and it is a local thing. Nice. So it's local to her and um Charlotte North Carolina. Nice. So if you're there, go to Cheap Joe's art stuff cuz that yeah. sounds fucking cool. And thank you so much Caitlin for listening. Yeah. And thank for you. sending us our email. We I love, love that. Yeah. We love hearing Yay. from our listeners. You know what's funny? I got Scott to buy me scented markers after that episode. Oh, really? Because they had them at the, in the school supplies at Walmart. But um, yeah. you were like, "Did you, like, have you painted? Or have you colored with them? Yeah, no, I just sniffed them. Do you them sniff all. them? <laughs> Do you just sniff them? I just sniffed them Is all. it mint or lime? Mint. Yay! Yay! You I got know, the yeah. good ones. You got the Mister. What are they called? Mister Sketch or Mr. something? Mister Sketch. Yeah, they're so cute. Well, um, we are going to be recording. A mini soda directly after this, and I have a surprise for you. Oh, and that's oh. what we're gonna record about during our mini soda, and it, it has something to do with our last something that we talked about in our markers episode. And I'm really excited to see what you're gonna think of it. Uh oh. But if you want to, if you want to hear that mini soda, which is gonna yeah. be exciting, 
Patreon. Yeah, you can support us on Patreon. We have a Patreon now, and we actually have a supporter. We have our first Yay. patron, Elisade. Thank you, Friend Elisade. of the show, friend of my life. She is awesome. She is yes. supporting us for $10 a month. And for That's $10 so a month, nice. she gets the mini sewed. Yep. So we already have one recorded where we talked about um, that stuff. Yeah. The liquid uh, Sculpey. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and which then. Which is fun. And I need to fun. remember that I was going to, I wanted to do that too. Take uh, a picture of the thing. And so it's in your phone. I know. Because I Because that's how I, I remember stuff. I take yeah. pictures of it. And then when I'm scrolling through my pictures, I go, oh, yeah. I was like, wait, there was a thing about printing on clay. What was that? It was that, the liquid Sculpey. Mm-hmm. So we did an episode about that. That's our first mini-sode. And Elisade is going to get that when this comes out. Um, I am learning about how to distribute these things. And I found out that I can send that shit through Patreon. So cool. I can send the files directly through them. So that's how it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. But anyway. It's a pretty neat setup, I It think. is a really neat setup. Yeah. There's a lot to learn, but it's really intuitive and it's really user-friendly. So you can support this show, though. For as long. Duda thinks you should Duda totally really do wants it. you to do it. He really does. Yeah. He's like, come on. Come on, guys. I'm tired of hearing about this shit. Yeah. But hold on for a second. I'm going to pause right here. And then I'm going to rebuttal. Okay. Now I'm going to start recording again. Or st- I'm going to edit that out. Mouthy. Did you hear that? But yeah, you can support us for as little as a dollar a month. We all, we, I have added our th- Patreon thank you page because that's what, um, from one to nine dollars a month, we list you on the Patreon thank you page on our website. Yeah. By name. Unless you don't want us to list you by name and then we won't. But yeah, we'll do like, we'll just say anonymous. Yeah. So say awesome if you anonymous. want us to be anonymous, but yeah, for one dollar a month to nine dollars a month, we will we your eternal gratitude, yes, our eternal gratitude, and um, from ten dollars to twenty four ninety nine, you get a mini soda month. So anywhere you feel like you can afford in that range, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. You get your name on the website and you get the mini soda. Uh, for every episode that we post, we're going to send a mini-sode. Um, and for above that, we're going to be doing, I was going to do a video, but I realized that's really, in, like, that's a lot. Mm-hmm. So maybe at some point later when we have more patrons, I'll start doing videos, but it's going to be the newsletter. You're going to get uh, a mini-sode, your name on the site, and a monthly newsletter for 25 and up. So we cool. might add another category later, but... Yeah, maybe we could do like a Google Hangout or something with oh, those yeah. people. Or... That would be awesome. Yeah. Like do a Google Hangout. Yeah. Give us feedbacks. Crafty thing. Give us or feedbacks. Some... Feedbacks. <laughs> is that the way you say it? Anyway, this is a listener supported show, as you know, and we have a, an official listener, official listener supporter now. Thank, Thank you, Elisade. Thank you, LSA. And she said in the Facebook group, come on in. The water's fine. Uh-huh. So if you want access to these awesome minisodes, um, go to patreon.com slash two RC gals and check us out. And I post, I try to post all of our new episodes there um, and announcements and stuff. So I'm trying to keep up on it and be good about it. But anyway, nice. there's that. Um, you can also support us with a one-time donation on the website, two RC gals.com. There's a donate button. Um, you can access Patreon through the website. Also, if you want to, um, you can support the show by gifting us things on our Amazon wish list, like shit that we want to talk about. Maybe we'll put some fucking pouring medium on yeah. that. Yeah, oh, that's shit. See if you guys want to buy yeah. us some pouring medium we can play with. Um, we will pour it all over you. <laughs> we will. Oh, how sexy would that be? Like, do a pour, a paint pour over some naked town. I don't know. That sounds a little pornographic, but I kind of <laughs> have you a take porny brain. Pictures of it, and it's art. and it's art. Yeah, I can just see it like yeah. over boobs. Boobs yeah. look cool with paint on them. Yeah. <laughs> what if there is a cool. safe way to do that? Hmm, well, that's another thing to look into. Non-toxic paints? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how toxic pouring medium Horrible is. It's body acrylic. paint. acrylic. I don't know. Maybe you yeah. can lube yourself up with something to cover yourself. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, um, <laughs> you can email us just like Caitlin and tell us some cool shit at 2rcgals at gmail.com. Or you can call the show at 503-395-7190 and we'll play your shit. We'll play it yeah, on this show. We will. You we want always your 15 do. minutes? Yep. Bring it. We're going to we'll play it. it you. you can tell us some shit. You can sing us a song. You can tell mm-hmm. us a joke. 
he can read us a poem. Yeah. Original poetry. Um, Keely has called to sing us a beautiful song. Yes. Once before. Um, Super listener Lois calls. My mom periodically calls yes. to sing songs. So, you know, it's a good time. You it should is. do it. Um, we're on all the social medias, too. So follow us there. And um, I actually don't know what we're talking about next time because I haven't planned that far ahead. It's a ahead. surprise. It's a surprise. But we will, in September, get back to our weekly schedule this this summer has been so fucking busy. Yeah, it's hopefully. just been I have insane. A, I have a high schooler now, so we're going to see how that goes. Oh, my God. High schooler. Yeah. Just have a good year. Yeah. I just, I just want your kid to have a good time Me in high school. too. I know. Please. Please. Please make my kid love it. Yeah. Please. So, anyway, until next time, go make some cool shit, yo. Do it now. Meep. Good morning, Katie. This is your friend. I'm recording on the new task cam. I'm trying to figure out what the buttons do. But every once in a while, I take a break to poo.